All right, let's go, people. This is Tim with the Word of Life Church, where our pastor is the Reverend Junior Mount. And as always, on behalf of Pastor Mount, the congregation, and myself, I'd like to offer you an open invitation to come out and be with us for service. So, so good to be back in the house of God. Amen. After being out, uh, you know, we uh, kind of self shut down because of uh, COVID concerns for, uh, uh, I don't know, close to seemed like a, about a month I guess it was I don't know maybe, maybe not that long seemed like it was uh, but uh, you know we're back uh, under our normal service hours and uh, uh, we thank the Lord for that and just glad to be back in the house of God amen I know I said that's <laughs> everybody said well you know you don't you don't have to don't have to be in the building and I, I know I agree with you you know we're the church and the church still moved on we still you know worship God and we still living for God and you know but it was just glad it was good to be back together in the house of God to worship God together in a centralized <laughs> location which is where we have set aside to worship God you know people want to fuss back and forth about that well you know to be in I don't have to be in a building you know to worship God you know and you know people well, yeah, I get that, but, you know, if you set aside a building, a church, as we want to call it, a church building, whatever, and, you know, you have joined that congregation, and you want, you know, you want to be together with that congregation, with your brothers and sisters in Christ to worship God, that's part of our reasonable service, amen? That's just a small part of our reasonable service, amen? And therein if you have if you've joined that congregation then I believe you should be there to support that congregation which <laughs> leads me to my other thing uh, <laughs> if you will have an invitation for anybody that wants to come visit uh, please feel free to come visit love to have you but you know if you are a member elsewhere at another congregation be there at your home church and support your congregation and your pastor because that is the right thing to do amen so hope everyone is doing well and uh, blessed of God most of you know saved most of all first and foremost and walking in the will of God and if you are you are blessed amongst all men amen that is the most important thing that you can ever do in this life I see all kinds of things I see all kinds of things that people post and everything say oh, oh you want those on Facebook I get on Facebook to post things on occasion. I don't. I'm not a. I don't. I probably need to post more Bible verses and stuff like that. But post videos and support other people that post things. You know, um, their own videos and own church services and Bible verses and and whatnot. You know, but. Uh, but yeah there's a lot of stuff on there that uh, I, I would rather not see <laughs> so you know I, I kind of narrow down to what you know I, I, I look at and if it's something that is questionable I just kind of brush it aside you know like you have to do you have to be you have to be picky about what you uh, allow on your uh, Facebook you know or, or anything you just, uh, uh, what you same thing what you have to do if you're watching a lot of TV which I, I don't 
uh, you know, uh, and remember, uh, if anyone, anyone out there, some of you uh, older people, uh, I'm not knocking you if you're older, okay? <laughs> uh, some few people remember Lester Roloff. It, it, some of you may still listen to his, uh, I, I think some one of these radio stations still plays some blocks in the afternoon, some old, some of these older preachers, and some in the morning times they play him as well. And uh, they have a Lester on for I think a 15-minute broadcast. Let me tell you something. He 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 hated television with a burning passion, and rightfully so. There's a lot of junk on there. He, my goodness, he anytime he could he could get on the subject of a television. My goodness, he called it. Well, my good, he would he curse that thing. I mean, not literally curse, as in curse words, but I mean, curse it in the name of God. You know, he'd say, wish that thing had never been invented. Uh, I can almost kind of agree with him. Uh, but, uh, good preacher. Oh, Brother Roloff. A lot, lot more was were, were like him in this day and time. Because uh, he, was, he was on fire. And he didn't care to, he didn't care to let it go. He would just, he would preach it. And then, if you didn't like it, tough. It was word of God. You took it, and if you didn't take it, sorry, it was out there. So, I think it's the way we preachers and teachers need to be today. And people that that tell the word of God, if you're out witnessing, now no, if you're trying to witness and trying to help somebody, you know, you don't sit there with your finger in their face and everything. I, I get that. You know, we're to show the the love of Christ, but. You know, but we're also to call out sin. You know, because you know the Lord Jesus, He did, He did both. He worked with people, taught, told them what was needed, told crowds what was needed, worked one on one with people, and told them. Sometimes it was in a loving manner, and as some. And he had a way of doing it, way. But sometimes there too, especially when it came to the the, Pharise the, uh, the scribes and the Pharisees and Sadducees, he sometimes he he let them have it. So, brother, does that give us license to do it when we're preaching the gospel through the Spirit of God? Then. We are constrained to preach and open our mouth. And he said he would feel it. We're, we're constrained to preach what he wants us to preach out of the Word of God. Sometimes it is a message of severity, of correction. Other times it's a message of exhortation. Sometimes it's a message of salvation. You know, of, you know, Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now I know we're to have, and I believe this, I think we should have an altar call of some sort at some point. At any time, sometimes during the message. Or at some point, somebody, even with just maybe even the preacher, teacher, or even during the singing, the Lord might touch someone's heart. And the preacher may not have even said anything at that point. But God's Spirit, the Holy Ghost, may be dealing with someone's heart. And they come to that altar before even the first word <laughs> it's even preached or even talked about it may, it may be an opening a few uh, words of scripture may have been given during the opening of service but the singing the spirit moving on the person and before you know it they're at that altar because God's been working on that person and you don't know how long God's been working on that person 
<laughs> it may have been for five, for five minutes. Sometimes that's all it takes for somebody when they come in the house of God and the Spirit of God is in that house. They'll draw them to that altar of repentance. You can sit there and you can talk to them to your blue in the face for eight hours straight. But five minutes, the Spirit of God drawing someone's heart can do more than you can for eight hours. You talking to someone. Amen. And that's what we want. Amen. We want to see more souls come to the Lord right now. That was the thing going on and right it here with the elections and there's so much going on in the world and unrest and, uh, so much uh, and, and people's wanting it that way the people way up top behind the scenes the you know the rulers of the darkness of this world the spiritual entities behind all this things is being pushed you know just don't look at it don't get you know stuck on democrat republican and that's where it is you know you know you, you you're gonna need to think greater than that way beyond that you know but that's what we see because that's what's our country it's what we see in front of us that's what we see right now. We had our, the whole deba debate the other night, which I didn't watch. I knew it would be a big waste of time to watch. Uh, so <laughs> uh, I heard about how it went anyway, and it's, I, you know, who, who cares? You know, uh, one thing God's going to put uh, whoever He wants in there anyway, because God's still in control. Now things are going to go exactly the way that they're ordered to go, because there is a plan. Amen. There's a plan. So, uh, let's just continue to pray. Because, you know, the church can still flourish and still grow. Can see a harvest and can see a, a renewal of itself while all this other stuff is going on. Yeah, I've seen it before. I've seen it many times. The last time though that I've seen our country really and I probably said this before and I've talked to other people before and the really only other time I've seen our really our country really come together as one uh, was World, World War II and that was really the last time that as a country we came together and really pulled together it matter which side of the political spectrum and at, and at that time really and truly uh, there wasn't really a lot of religious separation at that time too uh, that might offend somebody of a different religion right now but there wasn't and a, a, a lot of other factors but I'm just stating the case uh, but after that no. You get into the 60s, you know, Woodstock and all the all the other junk that went on during that time and uh, there was a massive and this had a lot to do with it. This is when all the massive influx of uh, occult and witchcraft uh, come into play. Um, that had a lot to do with it, and into on into the seventies, and here we are today. Uh, Wicca, being you know one of the greatest right now, religion, fastest growing in the U.S. It started back in the sixties with the influx of all that. Uh, and we talked about this and you know here we are getting getting ready uh, to start all the stuff that's going to be doing all and going on for Halloween or Salween as they call it 
uh, everybody pray. Pray against this holiday. And since this is this will go out because of all these tags and everything, just like every year when I bring this, start talking about this, there's probably going to be a tax on my on the videos I put out, and you know, denying all this, going against this. Oh, and 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 they'll be giving histories on this and how this holiday was and how it's not evil and it's just this and it's just that and it's just that and I choose to ignore them because <laughs> uh, you know if you if you've already got the truth and you know what what goes on behind the scenes it doesn't matter I say well that's awful it's awful pig headed and elitist no it's not being elitist it's when you <laughs> When you solid in solidly know what goes on, and when the Word of God tells you what's going on in these last days, you know it's kind of like out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, all these things will be established. So. As I said, I want everyone to pray, and a thought bring, <clears throat> which I don't think it, that what we're going to be talking about today <laughs> will kind of fall into all this, but uh, I'm still planning on getting into this because really and truly the uh, preparations for all this, I'm sorry I keep wiping my face. I've got, as you know, have you seen, as you've seen and heard, we've got cats, and I'm, for some reason I'm really ultra sensitive today to them to have an allergy to them apparently it's kicked back up again so I apologize uh, I promise I've not got fleas or anything <laughs> uh, at any rate so pray pray against this holiday that's coming up and everything that will go on around this holiday uh, we'll do is start talking a little bit about maybe go into some details about it and uh, might be of interest of some, may not to be to others, but uh, it's it's not very good. It's not very good stuff that happens during this time. Now there are others who say, "No, oh, no, that you know this stuff doesn't go on." Or oh, this well, and this is just a religion for uh, these these Wiccans and white witches and everything like that. People, it doesn't. A witch is a, a witch is a witch. Which I'm sorry, you know, there's no white witchcraft. If you're a witch, that's it. Now I'm not saying, oh, burn you at the stake. No, that's not. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, with your wicked ways, and turn to the one who can save you out of that witchcraft, because it's going to only lead you to everlasting damnation. So anyway, more of that to follow, but be in prayer, amen, because really and truly preparations for all this really starts about the, around the 12th, 13th, 14th for uh, the end of the month. So be in prayer about that, please. Uh, number for the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, 1-800-843-5678. Please join this fight. If you can't do anything else, be a prayer warrior for this cause. Amen. Uh, it goes really uh, along with what we were talking about just now. And unfortunately, even though maybe the statistics may not even really show, uh, and, and some, in some cases it might, uh, these will change to a certain extent maybe not to a huge extent but uh, during this time as well so be keeping an eye on that as well <clears throat> also I want to give the number for the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline uh, especially right now uh, have a lot of people hurting uh, that uh, lost jobs lost homes sleep in their vehicles have children they can only barely even 
toward one mil a day. Some people are having to move back in with family members and so on and so forth. And it's, you know, our government doesn't, you know, care. We know that. But we know a God that does. Amen. But if someone isn't there yet and you're working with someone or witnessing to someone rather, have you want to look at it, and they're just not there yet, and if you think they're in danger of something, don't be afraid to give them this number, especially if they've mentioned something about their hurting themselves. So the number for the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is 1-800-273-8255, and they also have a website if they don't actually feel, really feel comfortable talking uh, on the phone. They have actually a chat feature. Uh, that was a new one on me when I saw this, but I think they would much prefer to talk, speak with someone on the phone just in case to be able to gauge how a person is talking and everything what they're saying so uh, you know much for a person to be saved and being able to talk with you know a brother and sister in Christ or their pastor or you know but first and foremost being able to talk to the one who can take care of them and lift them up when no one else can but uh you know he said they uh hopefully they, they can get there and the uh, lord can draw them the spirit amen to an altar of repentance before it's everlasting too late amen <laughs> I have to get the coffee down before it gets too cold so I want to go to the book of John today and <clears throat> excuse me worked outside all day about all day yesterday and <clears throat> and the allergies has really kicked in so bear with me because I'm uh, <clears throat> fighting with that so John the book of John and uh, really wanted to go further as usual I wanted to go further down but uh, <laughs> it's so good I'm just going to start with one first one John 1 and 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God a lot of people still wrestle with that, amen, the little issue with uh, the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, the triune, the trinity, you know, even the word trinity is not mentioned in there, with, uh, like with other things, you know, we, we uh, give a label to something, you know, something that's in the Word of God, uh, uh, that that's not really in there, you know, like, you know, the, the triune God, you know, the trinity, but you know, it doesn't matter. It's not like we're <laughs> trying to add something there that really not in it. We're just giving uh, a title to something, you know, with the the Trinity, you know, the the Triune God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. So we have in verse two the same was in the beginning with God. So people say that you know Jesus was was created. No, he was from the beginning, amen. He was all the way from the beginning. Let us make man in our own image, amen. People say, oh, that was just the way that, that, that God spoke, you know, just because kings do that. That's the way that some kings usually talk, uh, or talked, uh, you know, and the, the, as they were speaking in the uh, second person or third person. Uh, uh, and, we, and we will make this decree, you know, talking about like themselves. No. <laughs> Because the Lord Jesus was there. He's always been there. Amen. He said all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. That's, that's, I'm not really wanting to lie on. I, I could lie and, and stay on any of these for, for quite a while. But I'm, I'm wanting to get down further down. But just even looking out now. Uh, and the, and the, the sun beaming in and I, I, 
there's drapes closed but yeah as you can see the sun beaming in but just even to see in the creation right now like I said I, and just imagine the creation at the beginning when Adam we talked about I guess in the video the other night I've lost track of days so I don't know when the last video was uh, just been something one thing and busy so I don't remember when the last video was uh, that I was talking about but talking about the creation when uh, right, but what, maybe I was looking at it <laughs> doing research for uh, a message or something like that looking at uh, when Adam and uh, walking in the garden or God was searching after him after the temptation and they hid themselves but being able to be in Eden and what it must have been like the beauty and you know all the said all the trees that they were able to to eat from and take from but of course you know said one tree the one tree one tree in the midst no, that tree, knowledge of good neighbors. Don't, don't, don't take from that one. Don't touch that one. Leave that one alone. Of course, that was the very one. You know, they had to through temptation. You know, had to, just had to get a hold of. <laughs> Hence, you know, mankind. That's what we tend to do, right? Especially now, right? But all things were made by Him. Without Him, not was not anything made that was made. Now, I could really, really, I could really, really dig down into that verse right there. But, oh, not today. <laughs> In him was life, and the life was the light of men. You know, when he breathed into man, a living soul. Amen. See, man can't. Man can't define life. You can't define consciousness. To him, to, to, to man, to say a, a doctor. But we'll say not a, a Christian doctor. <laughs> uh, which understands, I, I hope, <laughs> understands the truth of the matter. You know, we're just, you know, we're just a living organism. It's pumping, you know, blood and, uh, you know, which... Is you know drawing blood and pumping you know and oxygen breathing through it you know and they we're just this living organism that was you know that's the product of evolution over a great amount of time you know but we're conscious of our surroundings we know we are you know we know we're we're, we're self-existent that's that's why we are above the animals. Because we have an understanding of our surroundings, and you know, <laughs> that's why they say we're at the top of the food chain. Well, <laughs> in certain situations, right? But <laughs> God breathed in us a living soul, therefore, He understands. So, in Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Amen. He is life. Amen. He breathed, in, and he breathed into us life. Therefore, we know. We understand, amen, that we have a creator. Even it's talk, It talks about even just by looking. Just by looking outside. We should have that understanding and knowledge by evidence out there. But, of course, we see how the enemy, how he has split that off and said, well, no, it's a product of random things. A random explosion billions of years ago and then by a, f a fake, stupid, mindless process called evolution and, you know, the only way the rest of stuff, you know, and, and, and here we are. Just a counter to what God has done. So we know all that's nonsense. Unfortunately, so many, unfortunately, believe that nonsense. And actually, even some 
churches, or, or we'll not say churches, we'll say religions believe that and say, well, that's just the way God did it. He was experimenting. What? God does not need to experiment. He would not be God if he needed to experiment. Pope Francis, God does not need to experiment. Therefore, no, you are incorrect. He does not need evolution. Evolution is not a proven fact as you claim it. Let's get that out there. To my Catholic friends, brothers and sisters, I'm sorry. I'm not against you. I'm, I'm against the doctrine that your Pope is spewing out there. And I know some of you are too. I know some of you aren't pleased with him. You know why? Because I've seen a few of you. I've witnessed a few of what you said. I'm not just talking about you. I'm talking about some Protestant denominations. So this is how God did it. He experimented. God is not a man. He doesn't need to experiment. He doesn't need to run things in test tubes and run things through computers to see how it, you know, it, it computates and how it, you know, see if it's if it's you know if it uh, if it, if it uh, will come through the same way each and every time. He doesn't need to use the scientific method to see if it will, uh, you know, come out the same way two and three times. When he speaks something, it happens. In verse 5 it says, And the light shineth in darkness, and the dark darkness comprehended it not. So before creation, woo, so oh my good, before even <laughs> even before earth was created when there was just the throne room of God the third heaven oh. <laughs> was, it, was, it, was, it, was it just, just God just the throne of heaven? Were the angels around at that time? Were they created around that? Were they created before? Our creation? A little bit before? Was there even any darkness? Did it say that? I'd even create the darkness at one point. Yeah, yeah. Think, really think on this. Just let take put your thinking cap and and just let it let it go out. Think about this. Think about the throne room of God. I Me mean, being God, the Lord Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and that being it there being nothing else no darkness no there's, there would be none of this no physical reality on this end they're just being you, you get where I'm going with that think on these things there was nothing else until he spoke all of any of this uh, there, was no, there was no nothing else I, I'm, I'm not going to get mired down I just want to, I'm going to throw it out there because to think of that is that, that gets your wheels turning right there and you're thinking oh my goodness that's one of those wow moments so there was a man sent from God whose name was John. 
So the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. Believe what? Believe the word of God. Well, the word of God wasn't around. Who's the word? He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was not, or excuse me, he was in the world, and the world was made by him. Ooh. <laughs> he was in the world. Had technically part in creation. What do you mean? He's part of the Godhead, right? He's part of the Trinity. The Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, right? The all three agree in one, right? He was in the world. The world was made by him. But at the very last here, it says, And the world knew him not. We're talking about that he came in the world as that man as that babe in that manger in Bethlehem came in shed his his power his his divinity came down as a man you got to remember back in that time you had, well, you had other beliefs around the world, but as far as focusing, focusing, focusing on that time, you know, during that time, the Roman occupation, as far as the belief system, you know, you had people, as far as the, the, the Romans go, the, their, their worship system shadowed or copied basically the Greek pantheon of gods you know Jupiter being you know uh, uh, was you know uh, copied basically Zeus which was the king of the gods Mars was uh Ares, which was like the god of war. I think v Venus was like the... I uh, uh, can't remember her name. I, I, it's been so long, but I, if I thought about it, I could match them up with the names. But it, it, they, they, they copied... They copied each one like the, the the supposed planets copied the Greek gods but now I've I haven't to my knowledge I haven't found that they actually ever said either one either the Greek gods or the Roman the Roman gods that that they were creator gods see the Greek gods they believe lived on Mount Olympus you know, on a tall mountain and only came down on certain occasions to do various whatever things but that they weren't gods as Jehovah God that created everything so the Romans would have no understanding especially no understanding of a man a messiah now the Jews had the folk knowledge the their the Torah the law that said that one day that he would come. Of course, in their thought and their beliefs, he was going to be another, what, another David? One that was going to take the throne? 
but didn't come the way they thought he was going to come. Amen. This Jesus, amen, going to come like this, even though he fulfilled the scriptures. But we know they were blind in part. But hey, it's going to come, it's going to be like a David. He's going to be a warrior. He's going to sit on the throne. He's going to take these Romans out and pull us out of this uh, being under a Roman rule. Like a, a, let be like a, a, a David that's going to be this this mighty king. <laughs> but here we have this Jesus who says he's this Messiah. So it said in verse 11, he said he came unto his own and his own received him not. But the word of God said that they've been blind in part so that all might be brought in. Thank the Lord. Amen. So verse 12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. We've all. We all will have the opportunity in some shape, form, or fashion to believe on the only begotten Son of God. To the chance to have the opportunity, the power to become the sons of God. <laughs> you daughters as well. Amen. By adoption. Amen. Because at the cross and he said, it is finished. Amen. Hallelujah. After the cross, by adoption, being grafted in. Amen. After his resurrection. Hallelujah. Now we have that power. We can become the sons of God by adoption. Oh, just prior to that, we were sons of men. Amen. But now, by adoption to be grafted in and remember that said not to be high minded because we can be taken out so walk circumspectly walk with fear amen we believe on his name it said which were born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man but of God it's spiritual see I highly doubt <laughs> highly doubt I've got any Israeli blood in me at all Did probably any of you say that? That you got any Israeli blood in you? Probably not. <laughs> it doesn't matter. We are the Israel of God now. Amen. We have been circumcised in heart. Amen. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter right now. If I look back and I had some heritage of Israeli blood in me. So, oh, hallelujah! I can, I can, I can do this, and I can be this. I, it doesn't matter. Now, it's open unto all men, all the, those that will come with a humble and repentant heart. Amen. To, to the Jews and to the Greeks. Amen. It said, "Preach the gospel to every living creature." Amen. To all that call upon the name of the Lord all call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved but listen he said, he said Lord, of the will of the flesh can be the will of the flesh we talk a lot about just you know oh well so and so saw me I just got caught I gotta make it right I gotta 
I got to show them that uh, you know I'm, I, I know I, I I know that that was that was wrong, and so I got I got to let them know so that way they'll they'll think I'm okay and they'll get off my back. Nothing's done, nothing good, nothing good comes out of the will, the flesh when it comes to the spiritual matters and weight of the will of God. I can tell you guys. Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me all all day. And probably every one of you would be good enough to say, Brother, forgive you. Most of you would say, Hey, if God has forgiven you, then praise the Lord. Forgive me. But that's the point. If I haven't gotten down on my knees in humble repentance with tears... And those tears being of humble repentance, knowing that I have sinned against heaven and against God, then it's done no good. My sin remain. Hmm. First and foremost, and I say this, uh, not to slight anybody, not my fellow congregation or pastor or anybody out there. Really true, it wouldn't matter what any of you would say anyway. First and foremost, it's what the Lord says. Like I said, nothing against, not saying, you know, I'm. I know you guys would be right there and you would say, hey, if the Lord's forgiven you then, and praise the Lord. Then we would hold nothing against you. Because, and this goes both ways. You would want to see me get right with the Lord. This is like I would want to see you get right with the Lord. Because I want to see you on your way to heaven. Just like you would want to see me on my way to heaven. But we're not going to get there by the will of the flesh, nor by the will of man, but of God. And we're not going to get there if we are heady and high-minded, thinking we are above repentance, above humbleness. No, what God tells us to be humble before the Lord, to be of a repentant heart. You know, I've seen some people, and I'm not saying just like I'm not pointing out, not thinking of anybody like I know. That's what I'm saying. I've seen some, like say on YouTube of. That you just see their spirit, and it's there's no humbleness about them. It's like, how do you know? Because their speech betrays them. The, the spirit that they give off betrays them. And it's like, and you don't want, you know, you don't want to see anybody like that because, like I said, it's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I want to see as many as will and, and that God calls. I don't want them to turn down that offer. Oh, that song. I can't remember who said the offer still stands. And right now, that hand of mercy is still being extended. That call for mercy, the offer still stands. So he's waiting for you, holding out his hand. Oh, that's a good song. What's well, a good song. I 
find and play that next video. That's good. But the Lord came. And he said in verse 14, he said, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. He said, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. The only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. Who's that word? It's the Lord Jesus, as we talked about earlier. You guys know that. It's the word made flesh and dwelt among Imagine being able to have seen the Lord Jesus. Now, back in that day, you know, that they, his apostles and people that that, that they they knew at certain at, at at the 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 correct and right time. They, they came to the realization that this was the foretold Messiah. Amen. You know, we know now. <laughs> we know by faith and we're more blessed. Amen. This is the word of God said. But we know it because we have it to look at and read before. So we would be like, oh, that's the Lord Jesus. But one day, hallelujah, we're going to see. We're going to see. We won't need our faith any longer because we're going to see not with these eyes it's spiritual because <laughs> these eyes and this body it's it's either going back to the dust back to the earth or it's going to be changed the moment twinkling of an eye that word twinkling is if you look at the translation is atomic I mean blink you know like the flash of an atomic bomb you've seen footage of it when it goes it, there's a blink there's a flash it's that word so imagine when the Lord comes back and it boom I'm not saying there's going to be an explosion I'm saying the flash it's just in a moment and the twinkling of an eye really sit, think, and meditate on the scriptures. And God gives you sometimes just, and as I've talked about for some of these things <clears throat> that you sit and just think about, sometimes maybe for five minutes at a time, and then <clears throat> you've got to do something and, you know, and, and, and you, so he'll, he'll, give it, he'll give it to you for it may be a month at a time two months at a time and every so often it'll come back to you you'll be studying this and it'll come back to you and you'll sit you'll meditate and there's reasons that he does that especially when you pray and, and of course this is the reason for that when you pray for wisdom knowledge more spiritual understanding of the word of God if you're, wanting a dip, if you're wanting a deeper knowledge and understanding, that's why he keeps putting the thing back at your head from it to give you, to let you ponder on it and to put more faith back. And sometimes there again, it may just be a personal knowledge thing for you. Sometimes he says, okay, yeah, it's something that maybe you can share. But sometimes it's something just for you. Because there's some things that happen like a revelation not like a uh, like John's revelation like a call up into the third heaven <laughs> not like that but in the word of God that's something that is a spiritual feeling of something that honestly that it would be hard for me to bring out I hope, I hope that makes sense to some people 
And sometimes it's something that, like I said, this is for you. This is for you. Because you, that's what you're praying for. But of course, we pray for it. Especially as preachers, teachers, evangelists. Even to try to be a better witness for Christ. You always want to pray for a deeper understanding of the Word of God. Amen. And you're not purposely trying to pray for knowledge to say, Oh, I've got this... I've got this knowledge and you know I no I'm holding it back you know it's 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 just for, that's not that's that's praying you're asking for something <laughs> you, you know that you, you're asking a mess that you may consume it upon your own lust that's not what we're asking for no friends we're wanting the word of God a deeper understanding of the word of God that we may share it if we can unless it's talking about what I was talking about something that you sit and study on and meditate on that God's wanting you to if, especially if you ask as we said especially if you're praying about what to tell someone to witness someone to teach in a lesson to preach a message to give a message in an evangelistic position out in the church God will give it to you but always like I said this be of a humble repentant heart because as many as received him to them gave you power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name. Have you believed on his name today? Jesus. Jesus. And friends, don't get caught up in this sacred name movement that you've got to say his name a certain way to be saved and be in the correct will of God. Don't. Don't get involved in that. Because that that is that is Kabbalistic and that is in that's that's just other stuff that I don't even have time to get into. That's a totally different movement that you're supposed to say the name Jesus in a different way. If you say the name Jesus that you're actually cursing God and that's not that's not the correct translation of his name. Folks, don't fall into that hole. That's just another movement that sprung up over the last few years, okay? Don't get caught up in that. The Word of God says his name is the Lord Jesus. Amen. And Christ is his title. Amen. He is the Christ. Son of the living God. Amen. Amen. If you don't know him, you want to believe on his name. Amen. Believe on what he did on that cross for you and I. Today is the day of salvation. Don't turn him away. <clears throat> you guys know what's going on in our country, in our nation, in our world. You see what all is going on. Just a very short amount of stuff that I do in research, and I keep a, I keep apprised of stuff. I don't stay ignorant of what's going on because I wouldn't be a good watchman if I did keep apprised of the things that were going on. I just don't get involved in the word wars of stuff and political stuff. So. People know, you know, you guys know what's going on. But we're not searching. And we're not building a kingdom down here. We're looking for that kingdom that's coming. That 
kingdom that's coming from above. We're looking for a new heavens and a new earth where dwells righteousness. Amen. And you and I can take part in that. But you must be born again. You have to accept the hand of mercy and grace that the Lord Jesus is extending you. Is he knocking on the door of your heart? If he is, in humble repentance, repent from the sins you've committed and ask the Lord for grace and mercy and ask that you want to be saved and ask the Lord to come into your heart and to take up a boat there. And he will. He will save you from the top of the head, the sole of your feet, and you can make heaven your home. And that you'll serve him the rest of your days. He will put his spirit in you. And you will be a new creature in Christ. A new creation in Christ. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Amen. If you're backslidden on the Lord, come back to him. For it's everlasting too late you know you know you need to there's no fence riding there's no fence it's either you're hot or you're cold he'd rather you be cold than hot but he would rather most of you be hot amen because he said you're hot or cold he said if you're lukewarm he'll spew you out of his mouth so come back to him you know, I'm not talking about just going to church I'm saying come back repent and get back in the will of God. Amen. Amen. That's what the Lord had today that I felt glad to bring. I hope that it helps somebody. You know, you cast your bread on the water, send the word of God out, it won't return void. Amen. So, once again, National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, 1 800 843 5678. National Suicide Prevention Lifeline 1-800-273-8255 I will also link these two websites in the description box and uh, so we'll pass that information out there and uh, once again really need to start getting in talking about uh, and uh, try to figure out a way <laughs> to do this and try to keep some of this uh, G-rated <laughs> Uh, about the upcoming this upcoming month this this uh, upcoming month with the upcoming holiday Halloween ha Halloween I'm just calling Halloween doesn't matter it's whatever uh, whatever the name is it's 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 not a good time uh, well it's just, it's just little kids dressed up and you know getting candy and stuff uh, no you're there's yeah I, I understand that but it's what's behind the scenes is what's bad you know. So, try to uh, uh, get into that very soon, uh, because uh, we always want to be uh, informing and trying to show people that, you know, on the surface, a lot of things look good. It's what's, you know, what's below. You know, you see the top of the water, and it's kind of choppy. You know, like I've been to certain beach, like Myrtle Beach. I'm getting ready to shut off here in a minute, but just like Myrtle Beach, the water is horribly nasty. You know, gray. And you're looking over the side and you can't tell, you know, what's down there. So, you know, three, you know, two foot below the surface, there might be, there might be a, a shark down there. I'm just using that as I just that was just an example that came to my head, but because of an, an incident that happened <laughs> uh, many years ago when we were uh, at Myrtle Beach on a family vacation uh, several years ago, uh, so that's what uh, brought that to uh, my memory. So, so you know, stuff you know may look normal on the surface, but a little bit right on the other side is where the danger is moving about so at any rate guys take care and uh, pray for one another lift one another up in prayer pray for the nation uh, you know if a nation is not willing to turn from its wicked ways 
it's going down. I love our nation, our country, but you know we need to we need a uh, we need a reviving. We need a we need a turn back to God. But I, I don't know what's going to happen. But let's just continue to pray. Like I said, the church can be at the center of uh, the storm and be at peace and have that peace that passes all understanding. Amen. But still continue to pray because we're commanded to. Amen. Amen. Pray for the lost. Amen. And the sick and afflicted. And uh, just uh, like I said, continue to pray for one another, lift one another up in prayer. And uh, take care. And uh, we'll see everyone on the next video. Bye now.